Hello, welcome back to the channel. It is Dan Nocturne Knives coming at you today with a first impressions video on this knife, the TRM Shadow. I have this in from the Apex Pass Round Group. I've had it for a little bit longer than is my fair share, but I'm at the end of the group and I sharpened this up. So I figured it was fair to keep it for a couple extra days. Been enjoying my time checking it out, getting to use it. And I have some thoughts to share with all of you. So with that said, let's get into some measurements and comparisons. Looking at overall length, it's about seven and three quarter inches. Blade length is coming in three and an eighth, something like that. And then cutting edge is about the same, three and an eighth or so. Handle thickness, looking at 0.49, pretty normal, pretty average. Blade stock thickness, looking at... 0 0.08, very thin, definitely on the thin side. And behind the edge, looking at about 23 thousandths. There you go, weight on this, if I remember, I'll put it up there somewhere. I think it's like three, probably three and a half ounces, if I had to guess. Materials on this, we're looking at G10 handles, milled and contoured, integral. G10 backspacer, it's part of this show side scale. Titanium pocket clip. Hardware is stainless steel, I believe. And then on the blade, we're looking at 20 CV. And our lock type here, we have this axis style. I think they call it the river lock. Pretty much a sliding bar axis style lock. Now I'll roll through a couple size comparisons. Starting off with the classic Spyderco Para 3 and PM2. Spyderco Swish Bowie, actually pretty comparable in overall size to this knife. Here's a more budget offering that some of you may have, QSP Penguin. Here's the Koenig Arius, a knife I have in from customer, the Vero Engineering Synapse XL. Arcane Design Abyss, pretty comparable in its overall size. And a CRK Umnumzon, again in from a customer. This one has a wicked mirror polish, it came out amazing. This one's pretty silly. And then here's a classic axis lock knife, this one in from Customer for Sharpening, the Benchmade 940. You can see pretty close in overall length. So now let's get into the review, going to talk about my likes, neutrals, and dislikes for this knife. So my likes, first up is going to be the ergonomics on this. I think this has really solid ergonomics, especially for my hand size. Back in this main grip, I have plenty of room for all my fingers. In a saber grip, this handle is... Nice and contoured around all the edges. This G10 is super well milled. And I can get a good grip back here. A nice generous forward finger choil. Saber grip here feels good. Hammer grip feels great in both positions. Good ergos on this. Pinch grip is really nice. Everything is good. My next like on this is the materials. This G10 feels very high quality and it's very well machined. I think it's a good choice for this. And... 20 CV on the blade steel, I think, is a great choice for a knife like this. Something that's meant to be used and to cut things. Something like this that's meant to slice and cut things really well with its thin blade stock, relatively thin grind. 20 CV makes a lot of sense on this knife. It's a smaller knife, definitely a good choice. You can get high edge retention, high corrosion resistance, and adequate toughness for this kind of knife. So it's a good choice. From everything I've seen, TRM is heat treating their 20 CV pretty well. I don't know exactly what hardness they run it, but in my experience, it feels pretty good. And from what I've heard around, it feels good. It was nice to sharpen. I can say that much. Deburred pretty easy. My next like is the handle design on this. I like this integrated backspacer, the one piece with that show side handle. I think that's a good idea. Cut down on the parts you need make it a simpler, more solid design, I think it's a good choice. Next like is the pocket clip. This is just a good pocket clip. Deep carry, loop over style, the screws and clip are recessed into the handle. It has enough ramp to get it into pretty much any pocket and plenty of clearance in all the pockets I've tried. Great clip and it has a, just about the right amount of retention. It's stiff without being impossible to get in and out of your, of your pocket. My next like is the blade on this. The stock thickness, really thin. Grind, it could be thinner, but it's not bad as it is. It's a very nice, pretty neutral blade shape. 
a fairly long flat gentle curve up to the tip so it's a great user blade shape tears through cardboard boxes all that kind of stuff and you have enough belly to be able to cut onto a surface and you can actually get most of the blade onto a cutting surface without your knuckles hitting you can see that here so this would be pretty good for food prep, maybe camp food prep, stuff like that. Yeah, definitely like the blade on this. Nice and tall, very high flat grind. Next like are going to be some of the details on the construction of this. So you can see with the liner here, cartridge liner, they've beveled these edges really well. So it's totally smooth and soft and nothing sharp up there. And then you can see where it comes around to meet the stop pin. They have that area reinforced and milled slightly differently. I think it's a great detail. You can see all these seams meet up really, really well. And then in the pocket to engage with this axis lock, they have it milled out just a little bit extra to make it easier to get your fingers in. On the pivot here, they gave it this starburst pattern. Feels really nice. Looks good. I think it's a nice touch. On the inside of the handle, everything has this nice big chamfer on it. You can see there all the way around on the inside of the handle so you don't have any sharp edges. And you can see the subtle milling pattern on it on the handle. It extends around to the back, goes around the back like that. Those subtle ridges, they feel really nice. They're all very smoothed over and give it just that little bit of extra traction. Looks really good, feels awesome. It's a great little detail there. My next like is the access to this, the access lock bar here. It's really substantial and really easy. You can see how these studs stick out from the handle, makes it incredibly easy to grab and release the access lock. This is probably the easiest actuating access lock I've ever used. Just in terms of being able to grab and pull it, it's incredibly easy and incredibly smooth. It feels better than any Benchmade Axis Lock I've handled. It's just way smoother and it feels more refined in terms of its operation. Really like that. And then my last like is the build quality on this. It is built extremely well. And one of the places you can see it is in the, is in the action of the blade. You depress the lock and it swings closed. It, it's nearly free swinging. And this is on washers. And it has no blade play. You can force a little bit into it if you really wrench it from side to side, but with a normal little wiggle, it doesn't have any play. Like, yeah, it's incredibly solid and then does that when you release the lock and the blade is this thin. It's, it's very impressive, the tolerances that they have in the pivot system and in the, the liners and scales and all that is exceptional to produce an action like that on washers. And then you can see the quality in all the milling. Centering is absolutely spot on. And yeah, you can tell it's a very high quality piece. Now onto my neutrals. I have two neutrals. First one is going to be aesthetics. I don't love the way this looks, but I also don't hate it. It's definitely, it's interesting, unique, got some interesting lines with the kind of reverse Tanto-ish blade shape, but it's not aesthetically my favorite, I think. Other people might like it more than I do, and that's cool. Definitely going to be up to personal preference. It's not my favorite though, but I don't hate it. And then my second neutral is the blade. I think it could be ground a little bit thinner, Coming in a bit over 23 thousandths behind the edge. I wish it were coming in at like 12 or 15 thousandths behind the edge. I think that would make this an absolutely outstanding blade. But as it is, it's really not so bad, especially considering how thin the stock is. It still cuts really well, and some people are going to be more comfortable with that extra thickness behind the edge. I would prefer it to be thinner, but it's not a deal breaker for me with the blade stock being this thin. If the blade stock was thicker, then I would be unhappy about the, the thickness behind the edge. But as it is, I don't mind it too much. Now on to dislikes. I only actually have one dislike and it's the detent on this. The in-handle retention is really light. It doesn't really have a detent. And, you know, axis locks like this, they don't have a hard traditional detent like say this pair of three where it pops 
and it's a, a sudden break of the detent. It's a softer break, you can see, like that. But this one is especially light. It's much lighter than most axis locks I've handled, and I don't really love it. It's easy to do, to do that, to flick it out halfway. It's pretty easy to do. Not my favorite. I wish it had a much harder detent, and I think that could be fixed with a little slightly different engineering in here. Make this hook, make this hook here. That's where it engages with the bar when it's closed around here. Make that hook sharper and maybe give it a slightly stronger spring, and you could have a stronger detent pretty easily, and this would be a lot more fun to play with and probably more secure in pocket, because as it is, it's pretty easy to, to fling it open. Now, I really don't think this would be a problem in your pocket. I don't think it would be liable to open, but especially, say, if you had it in the wrong pocket, say you, you had it in your left-hand pocket or your right-hand back pocket, I think you could definitely open this because you grab that thumb stud and it opens up really easily. And if this was jangling around in the bag, I think it would be liable to open up halfway or maybe all the way. So it's kind of a, a fidget thing, kind of an ease of use thing, because you do have to get the thumb stud just right to flick it open. It kind of helps to grab it with your thumbnail and flick it up like that. And then it's kind of a safety thing. So that's really my only dislike on this knife, is I wish the, the retention was harder, the detent was harder. And with all that out of the way, let's hop into some conclusions. So for the most part, I do really like this knife. It has great ergonomics. It's a really nice cutting blade. It could be a little bit thinner ground, but I don't mind it too much. It's built exceptionally well with great materials, very high quality. And TRM as a company is really nice. They have great customer service. The people in charge over there, especially Marianne, who handles most of their customer service and a lot of their sales, is super nice. So they're just, they're nice people and they're producing a very high quality product and all made in the U.S. So always like to see that, like to support home, home country manufacturing, as I'm sure all of you do, whatever that country in particular may be. But I like to see it, a very high quality U.S. made knife with a good design and good customer service. The only thing that really bugs me about this knife is the soft detent. I think that could and should be much harder. Maybe that's something we'll see in future versions. But that's really my only qualm about this knife, is that softer detent. And if it weren't for that, I would, I would be considering this much more. And I still kind of am considering it. It's a really nice knife. Uh, if you have a TRM Shadow, you've been looking at getting one, you don't have one for whatever reason, go drop a comment down below. I would love to hear your thoughts about it. While you're down there, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe button if you like knives, sharpening content, all that kind of stuff. And with all that said, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you on the next one.